Hi, my name's Kathy Millett, and this time I'm doing a step-by-step -step on how to do background foam rocks. These are beautifully lightweight. They weigh nothing at all. So they're brilliant if your diorama needs to be portable, or if you're doing a layout that you're gonna to take to exhibitions, maybe a module. However, they're not as detailed as a rock casting. So if you want a really detailed fractured rock, I recommend a Woodland Scenics or a Knock mold. But if you're doing a background rock or you want something that's more flowing, like a being carved by water or wind, this may be the technique for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, before I start, YouTube does have a description of everything down below. They like to hide it, but it is there. And my base material is EVA foam. It's a cosplay staple and it's slightly squishy. It's not a solid or a hard foam. And if you're struggling to find it, then cosplay shops is the place to look. I used cheap printer paper to work out what I wanted my rock face to look like before wasting valuable foam. And then I drew round each of the pieces on my foam and cut it out. Cutting the curvy pieces is quite hard and I found I actually got a better cleaner cut if I did try and go all the way through in the first pass rather than making multiple passes. It doesn't matter too much though, these only need to be a rough cut. You will need to sharpen your knife regularly. I did it before I started and afterwards. But make sure you don't put any burrs in because otherwise they'll catch on your foam. Once you've got your pile of foam, you need to glue them together. Whilst it doesn't matter if you get glue in places it doesn't need to be, I find it easier to draw around the pieces so I know where to glue. I use Evo Stick Instant Impact Adhesive. It's very easy to use. It comes in a small tin and I decant it into this, I think it's a ketchup or mustard container or something. Condiments is what they poshly call it. And then it just comes out and you can put it on both sides of your foam in a nice thin layer. Apparently in the US, a good brand is Barge. Now make sure you go right up to the edges and don't worry if you get the odd splodge, you can use a piece of spare foam and I've got loads of it from this and you can just use it to spread out any of those little splodges that you've managed to get on there. When you're done, leave it to dry for five or 10 minutes. When it's ready, it will feel dry to the touch. So you only get one chance of putting these together really. So do first one edge, then the other, and then push it down firm. It is an instant grab adhesive and it will straighten out any slight curves. Just give it a good push together when you're done. I tend to glue the layers in pairs and then glue them to each other. Can you spot the obvious mistake here? I'm trying to glue the two pieces together. Hmm. Oops, nothing another layer of glue won't fix. And not to worry, you can paint over this glue and it's fine. It doesn't cause any problems with the final effect. Well, that works better. And now you can see the final shape of the rock outcropping and we need to make it look more like rock. I use a combination of a knife and a Dremel. To be honest, I do most of it with the Dremel, but if you've got any large pieces you need to take out, then just a standard box cutter knife is a very easy way. This foam is so simple to cut that it will slice very easily. Just make sure to cut away from yourself so you can't slip and cut your hand. Now to shape the rock face, I'm going to use a Dremel with a snake attachment. And for that, you need really good face mask because the foam dust goes everywhere and glasses. These glasses just went over my glasses. I don't recommend them because by the end of it, you'll end up looking like this. So please do protect your eyes and put on full goggles, the ones like diving masks that'll keep that dust out. Now carve away to your heart's content. It's up to you how much you round off the edges, how much you get rid of any of those gaps, um, just how smooth you want your rock to be. I do think this works better with a slightly smoother rock type of face. It's very hard to do fractured, shattered rock this way, partly because you won't get sharp edges on the foam. But I do find this a really artistic expression, if somewhat dirty. 
Now, key things to note, you can smooth your edges, which is very important, You've stacked four or five edges together. Because if you look here, you can see that you can smooth them out so it's less clear that you've actually stacked loads and loads of pieces of foam together. It's great for sideways layered rock, but I actually like jabbing the end of the sanding drum in. And this is just a normal grit sanding drum you get for a Dremel. And this way you, you sort of eat the top away so it looks a little bit more like a piece of rock. And then you can put in ledges and other items just with your Dremel. It's all very powerful um, and very easy to do. The foam just, just goes straight away. There's no rinse. And the, the biggest downside, as you can see, the amount of foam dust it creates. You get much smoother cuts if you move your Dremel in the direction that the drum is traveling. You can feel that it fight against you if you don't do that. So try and move it in the direction that the Dremel is spinning. And remember the slip, it will fly off in that direction. So always try and keep your work, in this case, it's to the right of me, which means when I come to do the end, I keep my hands well out of the way because I know that if the Dremel's gonna spin anywhere, it will be off to the right. Actually, that's my right as you look at it. So it's the left on this screen. Confused? Hmm. Once you're happy with the carving, you need to tidy them up a bit. A blast with a heat gun will get rid of any small bits. I think I, I go around and pick any little shreds that are hanging on off. And if you look at it, it seals the pores, which makes it easier to paint. So the bits that have been heated go slightly shinier. Next up is priming your piece. Now to be fair, acrylic paints stick fairly well, so it's not really an issue, but this gives it a nice seal coat from the foam and gives the paint something to grip to. I'm using Flex Bond here. Um, you can use wood glue. I tried the two of them. And the main difference is if you bash the wood glue, it may crack. If you bash the Flex Bond, it doesn't, it flexes. And Flex Bond is a cosplay primer for, for EVA foam like this. Now EVA foam is bouncy so the primer is good to have some flex in. If this is going on a layout and it's never going to get hit I don't really see a difference and wood glue you've probably already got around sat. But the only key thing to say here is dab it on with the points of your brush ends and you'll get a nice little stippled texture which will do wonders for looking like rock when you come to paint it. Once the primer is dry, we're on to painting. Now I like to start with a nice warm gray base coat just to cover everything in gray. I'm not a fan of um, painting rocks gray as a matter of course, but I do like a warm gray. It's a little bit less cool than a lot of the colors you see used. All of the paints I use are just artist acrylic, tube artist acrylic. So they're nothing special, but they flex. So again, they suit the foam base underneath. Once that's well and truly dry, and it does need to be dry or you'll start lifting it up and mixing it in with this coat, I diluted some, just a very small blob of Payne's Grey into some water, just normal water. I liberally paint this all over the rock faces. It goes into all the crevices and cracks and sits a little bit on the surface and just draws out some of the texture that's there. It does mostly get hidden, but it does add as a shadow should some of your other paints not cover it up later. You have to wait for that coat to dry too, and then I do a translucent glaze of an artist acrylic, which is basically just thinned down with water. Now I do three different coats in different colors, and this first color is Wedgwood. It's a sort of blue. I use a natural sponge, and if you get it this way, you do need to dab it out on a bit of kitchen roll. And then I splodge it, technical term all over the rock face. Now you don't want to cover it, you don't want it so that you can't see anything else, you want everything that's beneath it to come through and that's why you use a slightly thinner coat so it's more like a translucent glaze and allows whatever you've put on before to shine through. When that's almost dry I add some mid grey which is a kind of a, a cooler grey and a little bit darker and I just add it into the existing mix and it's getting slightly thicker at this point as well. I'm sure you know what's coming next. Dab it on with a sponge, but make sure that you don't oversaturate the sponge, or otherwise you'll just end up covering all of the work that's gone beneath. Finally, add some raw umber. I love this brown because it's quite cool. Mix it in and then use that sponge again. You know what's coming. Now, don't overdo any of these coats. You're just looking to add a little bit of variety to the color. 
Now at this point, I think it looks like a painted rock. So out comes the not so secret ingredient, a little bit of raw umber paint in that Payne's Grey wash that we did. So it comes out as a nice sludgy brown mix. And then you paint it in a fairly thick layer all over your rocks. It looks awful, I know, but don't worry, we'll get it better in a second. Use kitchen roll to wipe 90% of the paint off. Yes, you waste some paint, but what you're left with then is the brown paint sat in all the crevices and it adds a lot of texture to the surface. Remember, we've stippled the surface, we've stippled the paint on sometimes, and what that leaves is a lovely texture and this brings it all out. The final paint layer are some greens, just to add a bit of weathering to the rock. And you can see I've diluted these a huge amount. They are very thin when they go on. Now, I tend to use water mixable oil paints for one very simple reason. One of them doesn't dissolve properly, so it produces this kind of bitty effect, which I quite like sitting on the rocks. It looks like a bit of an incrustation or something. The second reason I like them is that they're, um, they're very nice wash. The other two dissolve very nicely and create a wash that spreads very easily. It does take a little bit longer to dry, but not necessarily at these dilutions. It's up to you how green you want your rocks to be. I feel north facing rocks should probably be a bit greener. I thought these were a little bit too strong, so I just dab them with a bit of water and that solved the problem. Just basically rinse most of the green wash off and it's stuck in the crevices. Once that's dry, you can seal them with a matte clear acrylic sealant if you want. It adds a bit of protection and also if they're looking a little shiny in places, it'll knock that back. 24 hours later, you may want to add some moss. Now, if you do this, I find putting a little bit of tacky glue on first helps just get everything to stick. I use Woodland Scenics Green Blend Fine Turf because it's a little bit of variety so it's not a dead colour. And I sprinkle it on where there is glue. Then I use a mix of isopropyl alcohol and water in a very, very fine spray bottle. This just helps the glue soak through. And I spray with a mix of very, very dilute white glue and water. It's about a sixth white glue, the rest of it's water, and a very, very fine bottle again. I do like to sprinkle on a little bit more green blend turf at this point because I find if it gets too wet it just dries and looks a bit solid and it hasn't got that light fluffy look I'm looking for in my moss. So here we are the final result. I used a very similar methodology on my 1/6 diorama recently so these can go, these are in HO scale, these can go from any scale from HO, probably N, all the way up to 1/6. It just depends how much detail you put into the carving. They're really easy to do, slightly messy in the middle with a Dremel but I find them a really worthwhile way of getting a background rock. Thank you to my patrons. You help support me and I really appreciate it. I've also done a free cheat sheet, a model it yourself PDF that's on my website if you subscribe. So go over and check that out. And as always, if you're enjoying the videos, I think I'm supposed to say subscribe below and hit the bell button so you'll be notified gets a bit boring doesn't it but if you're enjoying them let me know it's always good to hear and let me know what you'd like to see more of